climate change. It's kind of a big deal. To handle it, we have to drastically reduce emissions, sequester gigatons of carbon, and completely transform our global civilization. Our agricultural system, with its emphasis on annual crops and frequent tillage, is a major contributor to the problem. The good news is it doesn't have to be that way. Regenerative agricultural practices and perennial crops can sequester carbon while providing food and other important human needs. Hi, my name is Eric Tonsmeyer, and I'm working on a book called Carbon Farming, a global toolkit to stabilize the climate with tree crops and regenerative agricultural practices. At the core of this solution is perennial plants. Perennial plants are those that live for many years, like trees or shrubs or other long-lived species. Um, and perennial plants sequester carbon in several ways. First, in their above-ground biomass, like in their woody parts. Second, in their below-ground biomass, like in their roots. Um, and also, interestingly, in the organic matter in the soil around them and in no-till systems where the soil is not turned over, that organic matter can build up and be an important reservoir for carbon. So this book that I'm working on is focused on perennial crops in no-till systems. Unlike massive geoengineering projects like giant orbiting solar mirrors and other risky and untested strategies, which we may yet need to get through this challenge, uh, this strategy provides multiple social and ecological benefits. It can help to restore degraded land, stabilize slopes, um, break the drought and flood cycle, provide nutrition and income and other needs for rural people, and even contribute to climate justice and food sovereignty. So what does this look like in practice? This is the farm at Las Cañadas in Veracruz, Mexico. And the area we're looking at is a perennial staple crop polyculture. Perennial plants, mostly trees, providing staple carbohydrates, proteins, and oils for human consumption. We have peach palm, which is like a sweet potato that grows on a tree, bananas, plantains, macadamias, perennial beans, and even the remarkable edible form of air potato, which is a staple crop tuber that grows on a vine. Tropical systems may have a head start, but people are hard at work on developing cold climate alternatives. This photo here is of the Woody Agriculture System being developed by Badgerset Research Corporation. Their goal is to replace corn and soybeans with chestnuts and hazelnuts. These trees are planted very close together in tight rows for machine harvesting, and every 10 years they're cut down to the ground and allowed to re-sprout for a biomass crop, so you're getting a food crop and a biomass crop out of the same area. I have written a number of books on perennial food systems and perennial crops that have been pretty well received. I wrote the world's first book on perennial vegetables, and with Dave Jackie, I wrote a two-volume set of manuals called Edible Forest Gardens. I also recently wrote Paradise Lot, the story of my home perennial food production system with my friend Jonathan Bates. It's kind of embarrassing to say, but I am sort of a specialist in the world's useful plants. My library is full of books like all three volumes of Lost Crops of Africa, uh, Frank Martin's Edible Leaves of the Tropics, and the Encyclopedia of Fruits and Nuts. Um, these are some of the resources that I'm drawing on and putting together this global inventory of uh, perennial crops and practices. But I don't just read and write books. I'm fortunate to have been able to travel and meet the people making this work happen in many different climates around the world. I've also been able to visit some of the finest collections of useful perennial plants anywhere. So far, piecing it together on evenings and weekends and plane trips and so on, I've been able to do more than half of the research from the book. I have published two articles summarizing my research on perennial farming systems and staple crops. At this point, I know my writing style pretty well. What I really need to do to get this book out is to have big blocks of time set aside to just crank it out, to get in the zone, 
to be able to write from morning till night and not have to worry about anything else. And I feel like the world can't really wait a whole lot longer for this book. It's a book whose time has really come. With your support, I'm prepared to have this book ready by January 2015, which is a fairly aggressive schedule, but with blocks of time laid out to do it, I feel very confident that I can have it ready for you. And as a, as a contributor to the campaign, you'll be able to get regular updates on how it's going, um, see new photos and tables and pieces of writing, and um, be sort of part of the whole process in a very close and immediate kind of way. This campaign runs until April 30th. I'd be very grateful for your contribution, and I'd also appreciate if you'd pass on the video and information to other folks you know who care about the planet and its people. In order to save the planet, we may have to turn it into an edible paradise. Please help me write the book that explains how and why. Thank you.